The Displacer Beasts of the Dungeons and Dragons canon are a formidable, ferocious foe, categorized as a monstrosity, a very rare beast indeed. They resemble something of a cross between a puma and an insect. A curious comparison, I'm sure you will be thinking, however, if you were unlucky enough to come across one's path, a comparison you would agree with. They are sleek, powerful, and muscular, with a blue-black raven-coloured fur, a long, thin, feline tail, not too dissimilar to any other of Earth's felines, albeit with six legs. However, protruding from its shoulder blades rests the insect-like comparison. Two long, black tentacles. Appendages, you could call them. The Displacer Beast is a truly worthy foe, just taking those attributes into account. However, the tentacles are more than simply tentacles. They have a broad tip, and embedded within are brownish, yellow horn-like structures they use to combat their prey, and as a defensive mechanism. The Displacer Beast is a monster of a cat an average of nine feet long and weighing in at a whopping 500 pounds. This is not a cat to willfully come across, unless you possess the fortitude to face it. Some males have been recorded at 12 feet long, with females typically around eight feet long. Interestingly enough, the Displacer Beast's eyes can often be described as a negative evolutionary trait. They glow with a luminescence. Generally speaking, this eerie glow is a bright green and will continue to glow even once the beast has dispatched its prey. Although the eyes, as I said, can be deemed an evolutionary negative, it's unlikely the Displacer Beast will be an easy foe to take on. They are an apex predator, after all. Though being a predator isn't all they are, they could be described as truly evil. They don't merely kill for food, they will kill simply for fun. Sport, you might call it. They enjoy the thrill of the hunt, and they have the mental capacity for enjoyment of death, which makes them a devilish beast. More menacingly is their affinity for toying with their prey. Those that they do wish to eat, they will play with, toy with, inflicting pain on, ripping at parts of their flesh and bones, until of course they are ready to devour them, dragging the body of their prey to a secluded spot so they may feast on your flesh uninterrupted. And as previously mentioned, the Displacer Beast is only a beast by name, and not cognitive ability. They are highly intelligent. They have been known to avoid heavily armoured targets in favour of their weakly defended allies. So take note, weary warriors. If they see a more favourable target, an easier target, you will be dinner. They have a keen tactical awareness of group positioning, so don't think you will be able to outflank them. And if you are unlucky enough to come across one, you will need to keep note of their ability of being in a continuous displacement. This causes them to always appear to be a few feet away from their actual location. It's essentially a supernatural illusion effect, a form of light bending that the beast uses to get the better of its prey. It makes them incredibly difficult to hit, as their actual location is something of a calculation you must go through rather quickly, or else you will be lunch. The actual displacement effect is believed to be a functioning of subtle vibrations being emitted from the outer layer of skin. As the vibrations occur, the skin refracts light around the beast and provides this illusion. Whether the beast can do this consciously isn't actually known. It's thought that it's an automatic ability, a subconscious one. Though knowing the malevolence of the monster, one theorizes that it can actually do this manually, a free will, another tool to deploy to play with its victims, although the ability itself doesn't work on other displacer beasts. 
And interestingly enough, young warriors, it's important to note that this ability can even best those with high magical abilities, such as the ability to see invisible creatures. It makes it much easier for the Displacer Beast to hide and attack. Some counters you may employ, however, would be the true seeing spell, the illusion bane weapon, and a rare spell, phase trap. The Displacer Beasts reside in the Material Plane. They normally live in temperate forests, hills, and mountains, but they have been found in jungles as well as swamps, which shows that they can indeed swim. A Displacer Beast's lair is generally a humid cave system, and they will often establish breeding grounds within these locations. You'll know if you've been unlucky enough to find one, as the stench is un bearable for a human. The floor will be littered with feces, animal bones, and rotting meat. You'll see the stain of the blood of its victims and a white dust of crushed bones. And sometimes, in locations where cave systems are sparse or occupied by other beasts, the displacer has been known to tunnel into softer rocks, creating its own lair where it will hide its young. The life cycle of the Displacer Beast is not a particularly unusual one. They form mating pairs, and mating season is in the autumn, and this typically provides a litter of around one to four cubs the next spring. The parents are protective, much like other mammalians. However, the Displacer Beast take it a step further and will go to great lengths to provide a safe nest for their cubs while they mature and grow. One parent will always be with the cubs, whilst the other hunts, scouts, or defends their nest. And this is really important, as when the cubs are born, they are about the same size as a domestic cat, which, when you recall the size potential of the displaced beast, they have some growing to do. The eyes are open from birth, however, the tentacles are not present, potentially due to the pregnancy and an evolutionary trait so as not to provide too many complications during the birth. Sadly, the Displacer Beasts have an unusually high rate of mutated offspring. This is due to their unusual and supernatural physiology. I say sadly, however, this high mutation rate can lead to Displacer Beasts growing with a form of gigantism. These monsters become known as Pack Lords. And as you may have guessed it, are even more powerful than a standard Displacer Beast. An average Displacer Beast can live for around a century, even with the hard life they lead. And as you have suspected, the primary weapon of the Displacer Beast is, of course, its two long tentacles. They use them to lash at their prey like whips, slashing and digging their horns into a foe. Also, they will use them to drag their prey towards them, where they will then use their sizable jaws to finish them off. Interestingly, the Displacer Beast will only really use its bite to finish the prey off when they are close to death. They really prefer to use the range of their tentacles, another indication of their intelligence, keeping their prey or their victim at an arm's length or tentacle's length. Though of course, they will use everything at their disposal when dealing with a larger victim or a creature that has begun to best them. And due to their sleek and muscular body, the Displacer Beast is exceptionally fast, incredibly so, which when paired with their displacement effect, makes them notoriously hard to battle. They have an incredible ability to see at night, and the pads of their feet maintain a superb traction, even on ice. They have a fantastic resistance against noxious attacks such as Quicksilver or Mercury. So take note, young warrior, they are not to be trifled with. And the origin of the Displacer Beast is an interesting one. They originated in the Feywild. They were fierce predators until they were tamed by the warriors of the Unseelie Court. These warriors would selectively breed the species, making them as ferocious as possible, choosing the most malevolent beasts and ensuring they would breed these traits into the future of the species. They would use them as simple hunting animals, which seems a waste of their abilities, if you ask me. They were used to take down unicorns and pegasi. 
The monstrous beasts would escape though, and of course, being an apex predator, they would spread far and wide, eventually catching the attention of the Seely Court, where the hunter would then become the hunted, and from there, they would escape into the material plane. Thank you for tuning in to this explored and explained video in the Dungeons & Dragons series. If you enjoyed this and you want to see more, please do give this video a big thumbs up and please do share it. It really does help the channel out an awful lot more than you will know, as YouTube tends to suppress channels these days. Thank you all so much for watching. I have been Mr. H. Take care.